I want us to know and believe, and I think it's according to this passage, the church is worth suffering for. For too long, what we love to do is complain about church. But how many of us are willing to take pain for the church? And that's why Paul says, be encouraged. I'm suffering for you. Now, here's my thing, though. Maybe you want to write this down. The church cannot end suffering if it will not endure suffering. But we have to suffer rightly. We have to suffer the right way. And so that's why I want to give three quick subpoints for us as a church. How can we suffer rightly? I'm using psychological terms. I've really enjoyed uh, different books lately about uh, family systems theory and that kind of thing. I think it's helpful for this moment. Um, number one, one way that we suffer, I would argue wrongly, is what psychologists call detachment. The best way, kind of like a simplified way to talk about detachment is you ignore suffering. So you're somebody who detaches themselves from the situation. Now, should some of us detach from the news a little more? Yes and amen. All right, so there needs to be some balance here. Some people, guys, there's a life out here. There's real people quit getting caught up in the narratives that they spin, okay? At the same time, though, there is a way to be absent and disengaged and never understanding what's going on in the culture at large. And as Christians, we ought to care about what's going on because we, again, have the answer. I would actually say in many ways, I fall into this category where I'd rather ignore suffering. I'm somebody who avoids pain at all cost. Um, I just don't love it, okay? I'm just being honest. And so... We don't, we don't act like it's not happening. We, I mean, we don't say that the, what, all the wrong in the world is right. We just don't want to talk about it at all. We, we plead the fifth. And so really, I think the church at large is probably tends towards detachment because, look, I can be right with God. It doesn't matter about being right with man. I'm right with God. Don't, I don't want to talk to you. This is the wrong way to suffer. It's just to ignore it altogether, ignore the pains of the world. And I think it's why People aren't coming to the church to find answers because we haven't been coming to them. Second way to deal with suffering is called enmeshment. This is what I would call you adore suffering. This is like that person that says, I don't do drama. Okay, I don't even, that's not even my wheelhouse of thought. So when you tell me I don't do drama, I know you do drama. You know what I'm saying? Like it was on your mind. It was never on my mind. I don't do drama. Red flag. You know what I'm saying? Enmeshment, well, here's what it is. And so they're saying, I don't want to be like the detachment people. I, they're suffering in this world. I want to be there. But what you wind up doing is you get fully pulled into everybody's problems. And you think you're solving anxiety by just coming in and offering more anxiety. So we cannot have enmeshment where we, we bring our anxiety. We don't detach ourselves. We are fully engulfed and we don't bring any solutions. Which, let me argue, sometimes you shouldn't give all the answers. You should just sit and listen and cry. You eventually have to help them get out of where they're in. And that's why, I mean, psychologically, they, they call this differentiation is the third term. I wish it was a different word, to be honest. It's a little weird, and I don't fully understand it. But essentially what this is, and I think it's what Paul is doing, is you endure suffering. You, you have the right perspective about it. You acknowledge it, but you don't let it run your life. You notice the anxiety, but you don't allow it to cause more anxiety in your own life, but you're still serving. I actually think Paul says it right here, verse 1, for this I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ. So he's saying, I'm a prisoner, I am suffering with you, but Christ is in control. So I'm a prisoner, but of Christ Jesus. You think I'm a Roman prisoner, uh uh, I'm a prisoner of Christ. So I'm suffering. I'm acknowledging the suffering, but at the same time, acknowledging God's sovereignty. Maybe I'm not explaining it best. Here's Steve Cuss, and then we'll move on. He has a really good book called Managing Leadership Anxiety. He has this quote I think is super, super helpful. An enmeshed leader struggles with codependency, but calls it empathy. Oh, okay, that's, that'll get you. The detached leader struggles with indifference and thinks it is healthy. I don't get affected by them. In contrast, a differentiated leader is fully present, but fully intact. You bring the light to the dark world. And guess what? You can't come up with this on your own power just because you have the courage. I believe you have this kind of presence about you when you spend time in the presence of God. The, 
the term is withdraw and return. As Christians, we're called to withdraw, be with God in the quiet place. Jesus would constantly go in isolation and spend time with the Father, and then he would return and engage. Some of us are just engaging and engaging and engaging and we are burnt out and all we're doing is we're watching more and more conspiracy theory videos and we are stressed out of our mind. (laughs) Others of us have thrown away the iPhone, we have withdrawn from the world, we're just so grateful for all these books that we have and you don't know your neighbor's name. There has to be that balance. 